Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. Today I want to speak to you about the strength of the word no. Now, for a long time I've known how powerful the word no is and how it's hard for us sometimes to say it without an attachment of emotion because sometimes we only say it as a last resort. But I've been observing recently that powerful people say no in a way that they're in complete alignment of it. So if you've got somebody that's pushing your buttons and is trying to annoy you and irritate you, if you're not in a complete state of power, you might be inclined to argue back, to express your point of view, to try and get that person to understand you or to make that person wrong and to make, make you, put your point across, to argue your case and to stand up for yourself. And I, I know it myself, when I look back on my life, um, I had a younger brother who was always pushing my buttons, not always, I do love him very much, but I remember very key areas, key times in my life where he was very good at pushing my buttons. And we quite often used to get into heated arguments and fracas and whatever else. And, as I've got older, I've realised that what I was doing in that time was actually giving my power away to him. Each time I tried to argue with him, to defend myself, to justify why I was doing and why I was right and to make him wrong or to make him see things my way, each time I did that, I allowed him to have my power. He won in that scenario. And what I've been observing recently is that when somebody pushes us, when somebody irritates us and, you know, sort of tries to trigger us, if we just say no and stand fully and firmly in that no, there is so much more strength and power in standing solidly and firmly. And I think part of it has got to do with, um, I'm a people pleaser or I'm a recovering people pleaser. And what I've realised is my need to justify and to defend and to try and get somebody else to see my point of view was because I wanted them to like me and understand where I was coming from. I wanted them to see that I was a kind and just and fair person. And actually by trying to get them to do that, I was giving away my power because I made their opinion of me and their opinion of my actions and my thoughts more important than my opinion of myself, my belief in myself. And as soon as I made their opinion more important than my belief in myself and what was right and good for me, the more I gave away my power to them. And so this week, I just want you to think about that and to see if there's any time in your life that you get drawn into an argument or a debate or you feel defensive around people. And what would it be like if instead of feeling like you needed to be drawn into justifying, defending, um, making them wrong, making yourself right, if you just stood in your own power and went, no, no, I will not change who I am. No, I am quite happy as I am, and I don't need to respond, react, um, interact, um, get triggered by you. I am perfectly happy as I am. And when you stand in that strength, they no longer have an impact on who you choose to be. And it doesn't mean you don't care about them. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It just means that you are not willing to alter who you are so that they will like you more. And it's in that seeking to be liked and accepted by others. I don't know if I'm saying this in the right way, but I think it's quite a, a, a sort of a female thing to sort of turn ourselves inside out to be liked and accepted by others. And I might be very wrong with that and something's not quite sitting right with me now that I've said it. <laughs> but maybe just because I'm female and I know that that's how I've behaved and I've seen it in other women as well. Um, I could be completely wrong and I'm, uh, please ask, I ask for forgiveness if I am. But it's that trying to change to be acceptable and instead accepting yourself fully and standing fully in that acceptance. And, and the beautiful thing about it is when you really truly stand in that and your no to whatever behaviour is triggering you 
comes from that space. You don't have to say no loudly. You don't have to say no aggressively. It's just a solid, firm no. No, I will not be treated like this. No, I will not be disrespected. No, I will not tra tra squish and turn and manipulate myself to be somebody that is acceptable to you. And when that happens, the really interesting thing is that the other person doesn't tend to argue back. They don't tend to try and convince you. It's almost like they see the truth inside of you and they back off and they leave you alone. Now, I can't promise that that will happen straight away because you might not believe it of yourself straight away. So they might have to, you know, you might have to get into alignment with yourself when you say it. Um, also, if it, you're doing it with loved ones that you have practiced a certain behavior with for many years, you might find they amplify it first before they actually just let go and give up. So try it out, see what happens. And your nearest and dearest are the best people to do these things with because they are the hardest people because they've known you the longest. And when you change your behavior, it takes a much more conscious effort to stand in that behavior with them than it will do with anyone else. So if you can learn it and nail it with them, then you won't have a problem with anyone else. I hope you've enjoyed what I'm sharing with you now. Lots and lots of love from me and I will see you again next week. Oh, and um, all links to whatever I've spoken about are down below in the show notes, as well as links to my online courses and my website. So much love from me to you. Bye bye.